It's Thursday, June 1st, 2023, and I'm Dave Sobel. Two things to know today. From law courts to lab, AI's pervasive impact benefits and more pitfalls uncovered. And the FCC's broadband mapping, more opportunities and obligations for IT service providers. This is the business of tech. Shocking no one, there's a ton of AI stuff again. In Big Dumb News, the New York Times is a great story about a lawyer who used ChatGPT to help create a 10-page brief, which cited more than a half dozen relevant court decisions. Martinez v. Delta Airlines, Zickerman v. Korean Airlines, and Varghese v. South China Airlines, with its learned discussion of federal law and, quote, the tolling effect of the automatic stay on a statute of limitations. None were real. The lawyer claimed he had never used ChatGPT before and, quote, therefore was unaware of the possibility that its contents could be false. And a judge in Texas has added a requirement that any attorney appearing in his court must attest that, quote, no portion of the filing was drafted by generative artificial intelligence, or if it was, that it was checked by a human being. That lawyer isn't alone. Checker has data released last week noting that 85% of American workers have used AI tools to perform tasks at work. 69% of American workers said they either agree or are on the fence about being afraid to tell their managers about AI use for fear of being replaced by the tools they're using. 57% of American workers said they would cut pay in exchange for an AI-enabled four-day work week. But before you think it's all bad, let me quote from Semaphore. Quote, a new superbug killing antibiotic was discovered using artificial intelligence. Abusin destroys the bacterium and Cellbacter bonomani, which is resistant to most existing antibiotics and designated a critical threat by the World Health Organization. The AI studied existing antibiotics and then was given a list of 6,000 other compounds and told to find some that could attack a bonomai. In 90 minutes, it returned a short list that scientists then tested. The channel's interested too. Globally, 47% of IT and tech resellers expect customer interest in AI to accelerate. According to the report, with half at 51% actively working to bring related skill sets into their workforces. Half at 50% of U.S. respondents anticipated AI and automated services would continue to be a revenue stream of interest to their customers in 18 months. And if you're interested in knowing what Amazon is up to, their generative AI sales playbook, a 12-page document, was obtained by Insider. The sales playbook's primary goal is, quote, to inspire customers to leverage generative AI technology within their products, content, or customer experiences instead of selling one specific product. On the regulation front, OpenAI is warning the EU that it might pull its services due to the EU AI Act. A primary concern was systems like ChatGPT would be designated high risk under the proposed EU legislation. This means OpenAI would have to meet several safety and transparency requirements. A new set of frameworks from the Biden administration to help codify responsible and effective AI algorithm usage, development, and deployment are being put forth. The three announcements include a new roadmap of priority R&D areas in the AI sector for federal investments, a public request for information on how the federal government can best mitigate AI system risk, and an analysis documenting the benefits and dangers of AI technologies in education. Microsoft also released a new report offering five guidelines for governments to consider. Why do we care? The lawyers versus the scientists here encapsulate what you need to know. The lawyer who mindlessly trusted the AI and did no verification showed the wrong way to use the tools. The research team, who use it to narrow down the options for testing, are spot on with how the technology works best. And right there is the space for guidance for customers. Borrowing from Amazon's sales playbook, it's about leveraging the technology while being practical and considering how to use it. That's why I include the details of the frameworks being produced. They're the guidance to apply to customers and use a process not just the technology. 
Compelling offerings will include guardrails to reduce negative consequences. Don't wait for regulation, yet leverage the work being done. I've mentioned the FCC's broadband mapping efforts before. On Tuesday, they released their latest and most accurate map of who in the U.S. has internet access. Consumers, states, localities, tribes, and others can dispute whether the map accurately depicts the internet service they get. The FCC has identified more than 114 million locations where the internet could be installed. 330,000 more unserved locations have been identified since the FCC came out with the first iteration of the broadband map in November that had not yet been subject to any challenges. More than 75% of the 4 million plus challenges to the map have been resolved, according to the FCC. Why do we care? Very tactically, if you have customers in need, this is the time to ensure the maps are accurate on their behalf. There will be investments made by the federal and state governments in broadband, and having this data correct is critical. Two other actions. Providers can use the information from the FCC broadband map to make strategic decisions, such as identifying potential new markets or underserved areas that may benefit from their services. And this is fodder for your communications with customers. Are you and your clients tired of the time-consuming ticket tennis of coordinating meetings and help desk calls? Wouldn't it be better to automate this process with a tool that connects directly to ConnectWise Manage or Autotask? TimeZest offers scheduling automation that gives you complete control of your schedule and eliminates the hassle of calendar ping pong. As the only service designed specifically for MSPs, it integrates into your workflow and makes scheduling appointments easy on you and your clients. Plus, you can try TimeZest for free. Visit timezest.com slash MSP Radio and use the code MSP Radio to get 10% off your first year of TimeZest. Thanks for listening today. Global Day of the Parent. So thank you to all those parents out there. And if you are one, give yourself a pat on the back. I will talk to you again tomorrow. The Business of Tech is written and produced by me, Dave Sobel, under ethics guidelines posted at businessof.tech. Like the content? Support the show at patreon.com slash MSP radio or buy our Why Do We Care merch at businessof.tech. If you want to reach our listeners, visit mspradio.com slash engage. Part of the MSP Radio Network.